Welcome back travelers and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been kind of a week. I've been diving back into my job like I've said before and I'm also in the middle of renovating my room which I am so excited. I think I might do another video showing you guys kind of what it looked like before. It is obviously going to take a while to fully have it all set and done so it'd be kind of cool to see it before and then what it's going to look like when it's all done. Um, I just got a bunch of Amazon packages with some of my new like furniture and things that I'm going to hang up on the walls and I'm super excited about it. Since I'm back, my room hasn't really been renovated since like fifth grade. So <laughs> it's about time that I kind of uh, revamp the room a little bit. But anyways, today I was in the spooky spirit since it is fall now and it's pretty much Halloween time in my mind. I'm wearing my little hitchhiking ghost shirt today. Um, but anyways, I decided to talk about a haunted place that not a lot of people know exist. Um, I'm pretty surprised. It's always considered one of the most haunted places in New England, and it usually makes top 10 lists, but there's not a lot of information online about it, and it's really only locals that seem to truly know about its history and its upbringing, and um, that's going to be the Joshua Ward House. So if anyone who knows what it is or knows the story behind it. I'm going to dive into a little bit of detail of all the details that I've learned from people in the area from growing up along with some of the stories that I found online of people having encounters there. So to fully understand the Joshua Ward house, we kind of have to go into its history. So not many people might know who Joshua Ward is and that's okay because honestly this take and this story on the house really has nothing to do with him. Uh, Joshua Ward was just the one who came in and rebuilt on the land after the backstory that I'm about to share. Uh, but many people would probably recognize the second name. So before Joshua Ward came in and rebuilt a new house on this land, it used to be the house of Sheriff George Corwin. Now, for those of you who know about the Salem Witch Trials, George Corwin was the head sheriff at the time. He was a nephew to one of the judges that was on the trial, and honestly, he was pretty much responsible for a lot of the deaths of the witches, or the accused witches, of Salem involved in that time period. He was the one who would arrest them, he was known as the Strangler because his house he kind of double took as an interrogation area. He would take the witches there and force them into confessing that they were witches or he would torture them into a confession. Um, he was known to bring witches into his basement, accused witches, and he's also known for the pressing to death of Giles Corey. And Giles Corey is actually one of the really big uh, influences that supposedly haunt this house. Um, Giles Corey is the only member of the Salem Witch Trials, the only person out of all the accused who was pressed to death, which basically meant a giant board was placed on top of him, and they just kept adding stones and weighing him down in order to try to get him to confess to witchcraft. When he didn't confess, his only response was more weight. And basically, he was literally pressed to death in a very slow and agonizing way. And it was all because of George Corwin. He was the one who set that up. And it was said that he was cursed from that moment, that Giles Corey's ghost haunted him, but also cursed him. So let's dive kind of into where this Joshua Ward house comes into play. So we already know that it's the site of where he would go and where he would interrogate people. And... It's said to be haunted by Giles Corey, especially after he was supposedly cursed by him after Sheriff Corwin was the one who pressed him to death. Now, on top of that, Sheriff Corwin only lived to be about 30. The witch trials and everything that happened was only around when he was 25. And so he lived only about five years after he condemned all of these innocent people to death. And he died at 30 at a random heart attack. And what happened, though, was his body was actually left in the basement of the home. The reason being is it was winter. Winter in New England at this time period was extremely hard. A lot of people had to keep the bodies of family members inside houses, mainly because the ground was too frozen to dig a grave, a proper grave. But also on top of this, the witch trials, the whole mass hysteria had already blown over at this point. And a lot of people were angry at the Corwin family and mainly at George Corwin himself because of everything that had happened. They had blamed him for the killings and the murders of a lot of innocent people, for the arrests of people. He had a heavy influence in everything that happened. So the family also kept his body in the basement, not only because the ground was too tough, but also because they were worried that people were gonna desecrate it or bring it up or exhume the body once it was buried and just vandalize it because they were so angry about everything that had occurred. So the body actually stayed in the 
basement of the Corwin household for months until he was given a proper burial. Now there are still rumors today that his body is still hidden in the basement six feet below or in the walls of the house. This isn't true, although the myth still presides. It is said that he did get was given a proper burial in the Salem Cemetery. But going off of that, when you have a body staying in this house for months on end, clearly it might rustle up some angry spirits. So what actually happened, and the reason why it's called the Joshua Ward House now, is because Joshua Ward was a sailor. He bought the land. He actually tore down Sheriff Corwin's house and rebuilt a mansion for himself. It was one of the ever, first ever houses made completely of brick in the area, which is kind of cool. And nothing else really is that interesting about his lifestyle. He was a um, shipmaster, I believe, a sailor. Uh, the water line used to come a lot closer to the house than it does now, so it made sense for him to be close and on the water. But it is said from that moment on that there has been a lot of spiritual activity in that household. One being um, Sheriff Corwin himself. People have se claimed to have seen a man walking through. Other people to claim to have seen Giles Corey's spirit in the house as well, considering he cursed the household and is supposed to be living on haunting Sheriff Corwin for the rest of his days. And then the last one is supposed to be a woman in all black with crazy hair, which I'm going to get more into because this seems to be the most active of the ghosts who is said to wander around the house and terrorize people, and they believe that she is the spirit of maybe one of the accused or one of the interrogated witches during the trial. They don't have a specific name, they don't know who it might be exactly, but they do like, or she, I should say, tends to like to terrify, terrorize people inside the house, which is a little bit interesting to me because if you were accused and you were interrogated, I'm surprised that she would be the one to cause the most activity. But I mean, I guess obviously if she suffered in that household, she would have some bad blood apparently tied to the property. So we're going to kind of dive into some of these stories. So after a while, the Joshua Ward house kind of became office buildings. Um, as long as I've known about the house, I grew up driving past it all the time. My dad telling me how it was haunted because he was born and raised in Salem. It had always been office buildings. Um, and so what I had heard originally was that back in, I believe it was the 1980s, it was a real estate property. And, um, or at least one of the offices inside was a real estate property. And there was a woman who worked there who was one of the owners, I believe. I don't know the full story. If I get some facts wrong, it still leads to the same ending. So basically what happened was they were at a holiday party and they were taking pictures of all the co-workers to kind of put on this holiday wreath on the wall. So it was her turn to come up and take her picture. So she stood at the top of the stairway and they were going to zoom in and they were going to take her picture for the wreath wall. And when they took her picture, she was nowhere to be seen when the picture was developed. In her place... And I will definitely put the picture here was a woman dressed in all black with crazy black hair sticking out from everywhere. And everyone was pretty much horrified on the spot. Everyone knew this clearly wasn't the woman that was originally standing there. And everyone had known the stories. Everyone had had their own weird experiences. And ghost hunters and paranormal experts could not debunk this photo. They thought maybe it was a hoax to get more business. Maybe it was just trying to bring more... I don't know, popularity to the home, but no one could debunk this photo, and it is one of the most famous photos that has ever come from the Joshua Ward house. And it's just crazy to me when you have a photo that is that looks like this, and people don't really know about this haunted location. And this is also one of the reasons why it's been considered one of the most haunted places in New England. And so kind of going off that, people have said that the fire alarm will go off on its own. People will be sitting at their desk, even if they're there after hours and they're by themselves and they don't feel like they're alone. They will see people passing by them in the hallway, even though no one else is supposed to be in the building. One person said that they looked up from their computer only to see that woman with the crazy hair staring right back at them, almost eye level. And when they would look, scream, close their eyes, whatever, and look back again, she would be gone. And that's really crazy to me. I remember growing up I would always stare at the house and stare at its windows because one of the main stories would be a lot of passerbys would see things 
out of the windows like they would see the silhouettes of people they would see orbs lights would go on and off when they knew no one was there especially like the office buildings at night not a lot of people would be there at night because the offices would be closed and people would still say that they would see these flickering lights they would see people outlines moving around throughout the windows um it's crazy. My dad shared a story with me the other day that when he was younger, he was doing a project for school. So he went to go take pictures of the Joshua Ward house and a man came outside and warned him that he probably didn't want to take pictures of it. And that's mainly because a lot of people have seen outlines of things coming and developing in their pictures after they've taken pictures of the household itself. A lot of orbs on the outside of the building too, especially while they were renovating the house recently. So now the house is not office spaces anymore. I heard that um, businesses that went into that building often left pretty quickly after they came because they couldn't handle what was going on in the house and it is actually a boutique hotel now known as the merchant now this is kind of a crazy personal story but I almost worked there um, I had always known the history and I am a hospitality major so this was when I was looking for an internship and they said they were looking for someone to man the front desk so I was like all right fine I'll see how it is unfortunately nowadays they do not like visitors just walking in and trying to hunt for the ghosts like they used to no more tours or anything go in and out of there they will not be happy if you are not a guest of the hotel so please don't just try to enter but when i went in there i was completely surprised by how revamped the whole room was um or the whole place i should say and when I was walking through, there was a lot of old paintings on the wall. And obviously any old painting, especially when you know the house is haunted, is going to give you that spooky vibe. But I just had an off feeling when I was in there. It was a gorgeous place. They did a great job at redoing it, but I still had that weird feeling. And anyway, so I was interviewing for this position and they basically were like, hey, we just need someone who's going to be able to be here by themselves, maybe do some overnights by themselves at the front desk. I noped out of there so quickly. There was no way you could get me to stay at that place. Even if there's people staying in the hotel, it doesn't matter. I was not going to stay at that desk by myself in the lobby, in the basement, the ground floor area where everything might happen and then be told to go into the basement to do laundry by myself at night. Even during the day, probably. I don't think I would be able to handle that. I was... <laughs> I was shocked that they let one person in there at a time. I was like, do you know the history of this this place? Are you sure? Um, when I was doing a tour of the place, I did get one interesting story. Um, they did say that um, a family comes and they request the front room at the front of the house in one of the corners because the girls there like to play with the kind old lady that lives in the room. What? Why? <laughs> So apparently there's a ghost of an old lady supposedly that likes to play with kids in the front room and this dad's like, hey, can we have that room? We like a ghostly babysitter for the night. I don't know. But that one pretty much blew my mind. I could not wrap my head around that. Um, it also was supposed to be a popular place for dignitaries and other people in the area kind of just like an ending story that I just randomly thought of um George Washington supposedly stayed there in that house so there's a lot of crazy wrapped up history that is in this one building and so many people don't know about it I literally pass by it all the time it's just on the middle of the road um or I should say right on the side of the road there's a Dunkin Donuts next door it's right in the heart of downtown Salem and I just wanted to bring light to this creepy story because I haven't seen any YouTube videos or any Anyone kind of talking about it I'm hoping to do a day in Salem where I can film the house for you and kind of show you I probably won't be able to go inside because once again it is a hotel now but I'm also hoping this will be the start of kind of like a spooky series especially for these next spooky months where I can just tell ghost stories about Salem specifically and kind of bring light to the Salem witch trials the myths and legends behind it all what's real what's not but also some of the more or lesser known haunted places in the area that not a lot of people might know exist and I'm really hoping to be able to go invest but other than that I hope you like the story of the Joshua Ward house um, I just think it blows my mind that not many people know about it but other than that that is it for my video today please like and subscribe if you liked this my channel is all things about anything and everything as well as spooky stuff you know I love the haunted stories but that is it for today and I will see you guys next time bye